All right, well, we want to welcome everybody. This is the Global Watch International Call. This is the first official meet and greet session that we have had for the Global Watch, although we've been wanting to do this for quite some time. And um, so we have felt that <clears throat> there needs to be a periodically a uh, session where we just welcome people to the Global Watch who haven't been with us for a while and just give you some idea of who we are and where, why we have the Global Watch and where we're going and how you can get involved. And um, we're just, uh, we're thrilled to have people interested in the Global Watch. And uh, curiously enough, the, uh, we started to really grow exponentially when COVID started because um, uh, not many people were using Zoom prior to COVID. And then when COVID hit, everybody started using Zoom. So it became very popular and, uh, and we had a lot more interest in the Global Watch, but it's actually God's using something negative for something really positive. So anyway, we wanna welcome everybody Maybe we could have um, Shirley Momberg. You want to just open us up in prayer and then we'll get right into it. Great. Father, thank you for this time together that we can gather across the across the waters, across the globe, Lord, that we can just come together in this time. It's almost like a celebration. It's a meet and greet. It's a time to be light and joyful and just to get an idea and get a sense of what the Global Watch is all about. Father, thank you for, for knitting our hearts together and that we have a time of, of peace, a time of, 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 of even boldness and a time of fun, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, um, yes, so for those of you who don't know, know us, um, I'm Fred Rao. My wife is Susan Rao. We are, um, we're on different uh, cameras and different offices, but it's uh, about, we're about 10 feet apart. And um, uh, we're doing this because I couldn't uh, fit into Susan's office. And um, and when I did, um, I'd make comments to her and she, she would um, be annoyed with my comments. So now I can, I can put comments in the chat and she can be annoyed that way. So anyways, um, but we but, are but none of you are going to annoy me so don't okay yeah <laughs> you just so have anyways, to get used to our bantering a little bit here yeah so anyways we've been married for 38 years we have three children uh all sons uh two of whom are married and one who's going to be married in just a few weeks the third one and um uh and they're all uh 30 and above and um we are now, uh, we've been empty nesters for a long time. And so we're um, constantly seeking out new ways to serve the Lord and uh, the Global Watch is really the main thing that we're, we've been doing um, over the last few years. So Susan, do you wanna just get into what the history is of the Global Watch and um, we'll yeah. make comments as we go. Yeah, we wanted to just give you an overall view of the uh, Global Watch first, then go into a little bit of the prophetic history. It's really important to hear this prophetic history because I hope it stirs your heart that um, the Global Watch is not really a ministry that we want. We cooked up. Uh, it, it's a it's a journey that we've been on, and I've said that this is not a ministry. It's a call of God. Um, the earth is being prepared for, I believe, a divine intervention at some point. We don't know when, but one of the calls of the watchmen, according to Isaiah 62 and Isaiah 52, 8, is to prepare the way for the Lord's return and for the fullness of Israel's destiny. And so that's part, a uh, heart, a foundational part of the global watch is this preparing us for the end times to be strong to be encouraged, um, and we'll go, go into that in just a little bit. But first of all, for a quick overview, uh, I'd like to just share my screen. I'll be going off and on, so bear with me as I jumble through this a little bit. But um, the vision and mission of the Global Watch is expressly this, that we exist for 
revival, for transformation, for the fullness of the Gentile church, and ultimately for Israel's full redemptive destiny. And it will be empowered by communities of contending prayer. And um, that's a distinctive of a watchman versus an intercessor. A watchman will uh, is really into building, into connecting and finding effective ways where we can rally when the Lord calls us to rally. Um, the model for the Global Watch is really based on how Nehemiah built the walls of Jerusalem where the various families had their portion of the wall. So what's building now with the Global Watch is various countries are like those families building their portion of the wall. We also have some sp specialized watches um, one is for the LGBT issues, uh, a tech watch, we have a family watch, and there's a Psalms worldwide watch, believe it or not, where they get on and they pray the Psalms into the nations. And um, so I, hopefully I'm not missing people, please forgive me if I am. Um, but I want to give you a flavor that this, the Nehemiah family, when we come onto the wall as a family, when somebody wants to start a watch, um, they need to develop their family. They are released into that, that um, paradigm. And what holds us together, Fred, do you want to talk to, uh, to them a little bit about the core values that really hold these families together? You're, you're, you're muted. Yeah, why don't you just talk about the history of the of the watch a okay. little bit first, and then we'll we'll and then we'll get we'll get into that. I, I think it's important that we know, understand how the watch was started and and uh, what the Lord has spoken to us. Let's just do that first. Okay, sure. I'm gonna share my screen again then. Um, <clears throat> so I just said that um, the global watch is really. Um, is really a call of God. And I'm going to go into the, some of our prophetic history because that is a very important. Um, I was in, first of all, I want you to know that my uh, background, it, and I'm trained as a physician, as an eye doctor. Um, that is my, what, what would you call my... Um, what I've been trained in and um, profession how about that profession yeah whatever um <laughs> but in October of 2000 I was under a tremendous amount of warfare and uh actually my head was just buried in the pillow uh crying out to God you know I got to have you've got to intervene or you know I I don't know what way to go and I suddenly the warfare broke and I went into an open vision and the vision was um, of two uh, towers that had collapsed and out of the clear blue sky a giant pair of hands came down and when they lifted it up and opened it was Big Ben and this all happened within a matter of maybe 10 seconds it was very fast flash, but it was so real. I mean, it was like I was standing there watching these towers collapse and these hands come down and pick it up and big Ben appear. And the uh, paradigm, the spiritual atmosphere completely shifted and the peace of God came in. Um, I was actually dealing with uh, a, a, a physical illness that was causing me a lot of pain and the pain began to dissipate and I almost could feel the healing power of God's presence just go through me and I'm not overstating that at all um, but anyway 10 months later when 9-11 uh, happened I, I, I a friend called me and she said you've got to get on the on the tv and see what's happening and sure enough I as these two towers of 9-11 in New York City collapsed. It was a reflection of what I had seen 10 months earlier. So um, I, I began to look into the scriptures to find out what is this saying to me? And within a couple of weeks of this open vision, I came across 2 Kings 11. 
And that is the story of Athaliah, who was ruling in Israel. She was the daughter of Je Jezebel and Ahab. And um, Jehoram, uh, her husband, had just gone through and killed all the adults uh, that were in line for the inheritance of the throne. And he was killed shortly thereafter, and Athaliah ruled. Well, Athaliah dealt with all the children of inheritance. So if you look through 2 Kings 9 through chapter 11, it, you, you really realize that most of the, if not all, of the line of David was destroyed, except for one little boy, Joash, who the priests hid in the temple. And when they, um, over the six years, they developed a watch. And when the time was right, they presented the true king of Israel to the people. And so in a similar way, only globally, I believe God is preparing us now for the true king to come. And um, the watch is very key to that. And in fact, since we really went public with the, all of this, and which was in 2015, uh, actually 2020, tw actually 2021, we really went public with this. Um, the end time narrative has started to really escalate. So I, I really can say to you that I believe the watch is very much part of the end time narrative that is unfolding uh, right now. So uh, to also uh, relate to you that um, a year ago in January, um, a DMM worker in Saudi Arabia had heard about my open vision and he called me. Uh, out of the clear blue. I didn't even know who he was, but he said, I've heard about your open vision. I've seen it. And he said, did you know that they have been building a replica, a big Ben that overlooks Mecca and the Kaaba, which is the most holy site in, Is in Islam? And I said, no, I had no idea. So um, here, this was an introduction to modern day Islam to the world. And since 9-11, 2001, the world has shifted, and now this is overseeing Mecca, and I'm here to say that in the global watches, we're preparing for the end times. We're really looking at Islam, training ourselves up, understanding what this is all about. So all that to say, um, for 15 years, I kept this open vision under wraps. I didn't know what a watch was. Fred can verify, we spent 15 years just doing a watch here in our own region. And, um, but uh, finally, uh, we had a group of people in our house in 2014, investigating, establishing a watch here in, in California. And um, that meeting was very powerful. We, could, we came into agreement. We have now seven cities hosting a watch at one uh, city for each day of the week. Now on the leaders, we gather once a week to um, uh, uh, pray about California and what's next for on the line. So anyway, all that to say, the next, why, why am I bringing up? Because the next morning after everybody left, we went out on a prayer drive and I looked over to my right and here in the middle of the field was this pillar of fire. And this is extending up, I don't know, Fred, what, a couple hundred feet up into the sky. And it was just in nothing, nothing moving. It just shimmered there. We sat there watching this thing for at least 15 minutes. And um, we were just God -bog. I had enough mindset to <laughs> pull out my iPhone and take a picture of it. Um, and finally, after a little bit, I said, Fred, do you think we can move <laughs> with this thing sitting there? And so we did, we started driving and sure enough, this thing lifted up. And this is what it looked like about 20 minutes later, it was traveling east. And I felt in my spirit, God was beginning to move us. We'd spent 14 years out in the backside of the desert, uh, going through what a watch is all about, learning what kind of, it, you know, testing our character, stretching our character, all of that stuff that goes with uh, learning how to stand. Um, 
And God was saying, it's time to move the vision out. So within a few months, I was invited to um, All Nations Christian College, where just a, about 30 of us from different nations, I didn't know a lot of them, I was just invited into the circle, um, were meeting to seek the Lord about uh, prayer strategies for the nations. And the Lord in that group uh, asked me to speak out the vision for the Global Watch. And um, sure enough, what happened, I wasn't expecting this, but the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon this whole group. And the Global Watch really began to move forward after that meeting in August of 2015. But during that meeting, when I was speaking out the vision, something else happened. Um, there the alarm started going off and the people that were from England because Big Ben had just ticked ahead seven seconds. Now you can't cook this stuff up. This is solid evidence that God is moving. It wasn't some obscure vision. This is that God was trying to say that there's something about um, a watch and Big Ben is an icon of global time. So he was verifying the fact that God is wanting to develop this um, global watch. So. About that same time, we found out that Fred has some um, connection with his family to the um, outpouring of God's spirit in Herrenhut, Germany. Well, Herrenhut actually means the Lord's watch. And it was here that the spirit of the Lord fell on a small community of people. And as they decided to pray, um, the 100 years of 24 seven prayer emerged from that and one of the largest missions movements in history be, uh, developed. But so here we are in Herrenhut, Germany. We went there to see if we could maybe hold a meeting there um, to help birth out the Global Watch. And uh, we met a diplomatic corps coming down the street. And our hostess, who was expecting us, came out and met us. And she said, well, that's the president of Germany. So. <laughs> We just couldn't believe it. And of course, I'm curious, George, and I said, Fred, come on, let's let's go and you know see what this is all about. So I'm, fo I'm following up, up to this area called God's Acres, where all, all, many of the missionaries of that movement are buried. And um, Fred was reluctant, but I kept going and everybody else with us said, yeah, let's go, let's go. So we stood a distance off and then finally, one of these uh, service men came over us, to us and said, you know, what are you guys doing here? And I, I, we told him about why we were there. And he said, well, why don't you come on over and meet the president of Germany? So <laughs> we were invited to come over. And here's President then Joachim Gauck of Germany welcoming us into Germany right there by Count von Zinzendorf's grave, who was the leader of this whole movement. And I'm like, you can't make this stuff up. So I hope you guys are getting the fact that this is not our uh, human muscle moving this thing. It is God speaking to us that he is calling forth the watchmen in the nations now. So um, <clears throat> as we have stepped forward in this, even there have been signs that have followed that I am just scratching the surface with this and I want to move along so that we have time to answer, have questions. But uh, this year we did a, a, a journey to um, Israel with a group of people and uh, on a specific assignment in the Spirit of Elijah assignment. And um, the day that our, that our first team members arrived in Israel for that prayer journey, was April 16th. And you know what happened? A meteorite fell on Israel and it and it sent a, a sonic boom from southern Israel on up to the north. So um, these are the kinds of things that have happened to us. And so the signs have continued to follow to encourage us along the way. And when watches are established, they are transformational. We've had a a watch here in our region over the years. Um, and this is a picture of the year, about 10 years of really drought that we've had in our, in our region. This is a riverbed. This was it last year. And this year we had over 400% uh, of our normal rainfall. 
And this is the, and we are hopefully out of a drought if we manage our water well, but this is unprecedented rainfall all year, 400%. Undeserved. California, the ones that people talk about, the, the state needs to be, you know, uh, fall off into the ocean. And we, that's what we deserve. But on, we are beginning to see signs that, you know what, God's not done with us. His mercy is upon us. And that's what we are contending for in the watch. But just take a look at this. Compare this picture with what you see here. <laughs> This is our river. We've never seen this since we've lived here. That that gives you an idea of the transfer. There is transformational power in the watch. It does bring changes in um, in our environments, and then. Um, the other that's our little bit of our history, but going into what we're doing right now, we have a uh, discipleship for the watch the first mon Monday of the week. First Monday, Monday is always the first. Um, the first watch of the week, Mondays at 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. You're going to have to convert that where you live. Um, and we're training people up. We've done book studies, we're doing Right now, we've had messages by people that are within the watch that have been absolutely blown my mind. They've been excellent. I've learned so much from people in the watch. But generally speaking, we're trying to uh, equip people in their individual call as watchmen, as individuals in the Lord, um, and building community. How do we build community effectively? And then finally, which is high on my radar list, is helping equip people for the end times. So that those are the major things that we're uh, focusing on in discipleship. And uh, finally, how do we connect? We um, are doing morning and evening expressions of the watch. Why? Because um, actually when we started to step out in 2016 for uh, national and international expressions, uh, Daniel Lim from IHOP KC advised us not to do 24 seven, but to actually rebirth the morning and the evening rhythm. And that's from creation itself, there was morning and then there was evening. The uh, priestly functions had morning and evening sacrifice. And so and we're actually finding that as we've done that Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. Jerusalem time, uh, it's a landing place for the family to land, and it's helping, helping us actually to develop community within the watch itself. So we do 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday morning, but Friday afternoon, we do a 5 p.m. Um, call, which we do as an international Shabbat. And this is all Jerusalem time, so you have to figure it out with your time zone where you're at. But I'm loving it. The Shabbat is one of my favorite watches in the week. Please don't take offense, people who are doing their watches. <laughs> but it is just a, a joyful time because uh, we all have gone through a busy week and it's time to just rest in the Lord. And we take the weekends off. We start up again Monday, 6 a.m., which is our journey session, our discipleship time. We also connect through prayer summits. We're doing the Global Watch um, yearly so far. Uh, we had to take a couple years off because of the COVID restrictions, but we're up again. This, we just had a summit. It was a wonderful, some of you who were at the summit may wanna speak up in a moment and what it meant for you. Um, our next summit is the 9th through the 16th of August in 2024 here in Herrenhut, Germany. I uh, encourage you all to look into that, start saving your pennies because it's an amazing place uh, just to go and be in the woods of Germany and relaxed. Um, you think a week long summit? Are you kidding me? You know, usually it's two or three days. I don't think that that's the, uh, uh, 
it's getting to be the point that a week is not long enough. <laughs> it's just uh, a relaxed time, a lot of discussions, a lot of prayer time, relationship building. That's what it's mentored around. The USA Watch um, is having a summit here in the United States in Philadelphia, the 15th to the 17th of September. Those on the USA Watch, you may want to co comment on it. So we have Zoom calls daily, Monday to Friday, prayer summits, and then strategic interventions. Um, the Oslo Accords is one that's coming up this uh, September, uh, this month, in a couple of weeks. I, I won't go into that more, but there is, there's a lot of things that you can find. Um, I'm going to stop my share uh, because I want to show you uh, our website. The main website is the Global Watch. Um, this is our website. You go to uh, theglobalwatch.com and we have a lot of different, a lot of information on here, prophetic words, articles for you to look up. We have a school of the watchman. We just set this up um, where you can go in and get into some of the basics of the watch uh, for a ready uh, uh, resource for you. Some of these are short and it doesn't take too long to go through them. Um, but that's our, that's our global watch website. And then I would like to show you the USA Watch because there's a lot of people here on the USA Watch. It's the usawatch.com and it's theglobalwatch.com depending upon which one you'd like to look at. And um, those are the main ones right now. There are, uh, there are different national expressions, like I said, developing and they have their own watches during the week. Then once a month, they come up to the the global watch uh, and bring whatever uh, is of interest for that nation to us and actually i i am enjoying this so much fred and i have turned off the news because we're getting the news through the watches and it's more accurate and more truthful news than we could ever get on the, on the tv so um there are I think that's all I have to say, Fred. Do you have some things you want to add, and then we can open it up for people? Yeah, sure. I I just like to highlight a couple things. Um, one of them is that the difference between you 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 kind of went over this, but let me just try to highlight it. There's a, a difference between uh, a watchman and an intercessor, and and it is a kind of a stance that that we take, <clears throat> and we're. The example really in scripture is the um, when Nehemiah was building the wall uh, around Jerusalem and uh, basically organized people by families. A watchman is um, an intercessor can pray for anything and, and, and that's great. And that's wonderful. Um, but a watchman is has a when you understand what your calling is as a watchman, you have a certain responsibility. And the responsibility, watchmen, what they do is they guard whatever area they've been called to watch over. And it may be a city, it may be a state, it may be a nation, it may be a particular uh, people group that are organized in a certain way, like um, uh, people who are in the tech industry, for instance. And what watchmen do is they get up on the wall and they are looking out over beyond the wall to see what's coming in. And they are the ones who, in the spirit, um, either help prevent certain spirits from coming in or, or allow and encourage other spirits from coming in. And by the nature of that, it is, um, there's a couple things. It is, uh, you, you have to cultivate kind of a prophetic anointing because you have to see in the spirit. And this is really important. It's important that we learn how to hear what God is saying to us and we learn how to see what is happening spiritually. That's one aspect. Another aspect is that it really is corporate. There is an individual call and we need to develop ourselves individually, but we are growing relationally. We're, we're, we really emphasize that because 
what we want to do is we want to, when we have watchmen over a certain area, we the watchmen need to be friends. They need to be really family. And we need to be able to trust each other. And we need to be able to see corporately, not just individually, what the spirit is doing. And so in order to do that, we have to have, um, <laughs> we have to be able to work together. And the more we work together and the more we have unity, the greater the sense of the spirit of the Lord is and the greater the prophetic anointing. And so we have um, some core values that we really treasure and that everyone who's in the watch really needs to follow those. There are a number of them, but I just want to emphasize two that are very key. One is that we are called to constantly speak life into each other. Um, Hebrews 10, 24 in, in, in exhorts us to spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And so we're, we're, we're always wanting to encourage each other. We're always wanting to lift each other up. We're wanting to be positive in whatever that it is that we're doing. The other aspect is that we really, um, we really emphasize that there is, if there's a conflict or an offense or something that's a disagreement, we really try to have people follow uh, Matthew 18 protocol, which means that you go directly to the person that you're having a conflict with. And if there's a misunderstanding, you try to work that out. And um, uh, if, you know, if you need to bring other people into it, you can, but it's that kind of thing stops um, gossip from happening, stops people from uh, warring with each other and taking sides. And what happens is that what's happening is that we're developing a community of love and trust and it goes um, internationally. And it is very exciting. The um, we we have I have great friends that are on the watch that I've actually never met in person because we've they become friends because God has knit our hearts together. And when you're on a Zoom call, you can see each other praying, and uh, the anointing comes across uh, on Zoom, and the presence of the Lord can come across on the Zoom. We've been laughing together, we've been crying together. We've been deeply moved by God on uh, various calls, and it's uh, it's extremely exciting. So we are, uh, Susan and I are not experts in this. We're just, God thrust us into a place of, uh, of leadership in this, and we are just trying to, we're not trying to control things. We're trying to just see what ourselves, get up on the wall and see what God is doing, and um, and help to, uh, help to guide this. It's like um, one of our uh, dear members uh, who's on the call, Jenny Hager, one of our leaders, has said that it's not, the watch is, Global Watch is not an organization that you join, it's a river that you jump into. And that's a pretty good, um, that's a pretty good description because we're, as leaders, we're just trying to put banks up on the river to have it flow in the right direction, but not being so controlling that we actually stop up the river from flowing. So we're very dependent on the Lord and on the Holy Spirit. Um, we do deeply value uh, growing in the prophetic. And um, uh, that's and really, in, that's about in. it. We're, 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 we're trying to do it and, and have fun while we're, while we're uh, on this adventure. So uh, we, I want to open it up for people to ask questions. And maybe those of you who have been on the watch for a while, if you want to, inject your thoughts we'd love it love to hear it you can you can raise up your hand there on the bottom of your screen there are reactions and it, it helps us just to um to keep things flowing if you want to raise your hand we can call on you that'd be good uh if you don't um raise your hand we'll call on you <laughs> oh allison Hi everyone, um, I'm from Australia and uh, I just want to add my little bit by saying that being part of the Global Watch has been the most rewarding and wonderful experience for me, believe it or not, I was so shy once upon a time, I probably still am, but um, it's been forced out of me um, purely because 
uh, we are, we've all been called up. And, um, and so, you know, you, you jump over those things that concern you about the, the natural, oh, I'm a bit shy, I'm a bit this, whatever. And I think, no, too bad. I'm going for it. So if I can do it, you can. And, um, and I just want to say, um, Fred and Sue have just been uh, brilliant because they're real. Um, they are full of the love of the Lord and uh, they're honest. They're also very transparent. And so I just honour you both, Fred and Sue, because without you at the helm, uh, we wouldn't be here. And, uh, and as you said earlier, Sue, it's a great landing place. So I hope you all find your landing spot uh, in Global Watch. And I just believe that you'll bloom because with the love and the support and the, the living words that are spoken out over each other in love constantly, um, you can't help but grow. So, so bless you, everyone, and I believe you'll not be disappointed. Uh, Alison, I just want to jump out of the Zoom and hug you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. That's so great. Um, let's go to uh, Kim Ulmer. Kim, go ahead. Hi, I'm Kim Ulmer from the USA, and I think I've been involved with the Global Watch since 2016, and I'm just going to echo what Allison said. I mean, I just feel the Lord's pleasure when we all, when the nations come together and we pray as one, and it truly is like family, and so I just want to welcome everyone here that's new that this is this is going to be a great experience there's just something about it and standing with one another contending for the destiny of our nations and this is just such an awesome time to be part of the body of christ so welcome oh thank, thank you kim. kim that's so good jody oh, jody go ahead, jody go ahead and unmute yourself oh whoops you have to unmute yourself jody okay yeah there thank you, go. you. It's early in the morning for me. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, I'm just so pleased because I was introduced to the Global Watch maybe a year ago, and we've popped on a few times, my husband and I, uh, to share. But um, really, I, I got to know the Global Watch for for the height, the breadth, the width, I believe, in Hernhut this last uh, August, and it was well, still August, the last day, but um, I was really blessed. Uh, we were really blessed. I shouldn't say just I, but um, normally we're in Poland during August at, at a conference that happens just outside the camp every year. And this year we said, no, we're, we're going to go to this global watch. We're going to spend a week there. So <laughs> we were just, we were just really filled up. Our hearts were overflowing and and we were really blessed to be with friends that live there in Hernhood as well. And, and then to meet you guys, Fred and Sue, at, at, in person, the real people. <laughs> and you guys are so real and so transparent as leaders. It's really refreshing. And uh, we're just really blessed to be a part of a company of people who are serious about their walk with the Lord, serious about their relationship and also relationship with others, and then to pray together and to prepare for, for not only what's here now, but what's coming. And uh, so I'm just so grateful for that and to be a part and I'll jump on as much as I can. We stay pretty busy, but <laughs> here in Israel, but uh, thank you for including us and, and for s establishing this. And surely it was really nice to meet you too in person. <laughs> Mwah. Love you guys. And uh, you can't do anything about it, can you? <laughs> mm, right back at you, Judy. Ju Jody, thank you so much. Jody, thank you so much. Yeah. We love meeting you, so you too. Yes. Um, go ahead, Shirley. I just want to say that the Global Watch has really um, helped to establish a rhythm um, and a um, and a discipline of prayer. I was praying, and I I'm um, my heart is very for the prophetic and 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 anything prophetic. 
And what I love with the Global Watch, I mean, 1 Corinthians 39 says, for our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete and perfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary. And so what we find is we all see in part, but with the Global Watch, the Global Watch provides a safe place to grow in the prophetic. Many of us have been wounded by um, people maybe they didn't even realize but even those who don't understand the prophetic, who maybe are um, intimidated or have been have had bad experiences with prophetic voices. But this is a place to, to get grounding. This is a place to get established, a place to, to hear what the Lord is saying and to be able to share that. One of the core values, um, um, two was, well, a few were shared earlier, but listen to this. This is what um, one of the core values of the Global Watch is is to hear God's voice. And this is what it says. We are committed to encouraging and developing corporate prayer, worship environments conducive to hearing the voice of God. We value hearing the voice of God through individuals, through groups, and larger corporate environments as what? As an integral part of the watch and its ongoing development, its growth, and inspiration. And Habakkuk 2, 1, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he says to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. And I just want to say that if, if you are looking for a place where you are welcome, that you are accepted, and what you have to say is important, this is it. We are so, so pleased and we are so blessed to meet you and to have you on board. Wow, Shirley. Thank, thank you so much, Shirley. That's wow. so good. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, Utah, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Yes, I just want to give testimony. I'm, I think, two or two and a half years um, um, with, with the Global Watch, and the Lord really put me on assignment to be on, and I, um, I exper uh, experienced so much healing, especially from leadership. And um, and I experience it's really a safe place to learn to grow together, and um, and so that uh, your part can unfold and bloom, and and also to see others. So it's really um, uh, um, a growing together, and there is so much in 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 a safe um, in a safe place. Um, where you feel welcomed and loved and where you can love and, and really um, um, can uh, what, what the Lord puts in you can you can release to others. So it's amazing and that over nations. So I just want to testify that. <laughs> and I'm so thankful. Thank you, Yuta. Amen. Thank you, Yuta. <laughs> That's good. Ask Selena or A Selena. Not sure how to pronounce your name, but go ahead and unmute yourself. Oops, I think she just... No, no, okay. she's there. Is she there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm here. Good okay. morning. Um, my name is Asalina. I'm joining you from Abuja in Nigeria. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is my first time. Actually, it's about 4.45. I had to sit up because I didn't want to miss... Uh, I didn't want to miss uh, the, the Zoom meeting um i haven't heard about this uh, ministry until lately when i was in israel i think last month i got to hear from my friend karen davis i don't know if you met her yes so oh yes. She, yes yes we love karen oh, davis uh -huh. yeah, karen so seems she, to know everybody from every nation so uh, i'm not surprised yeah, so, that friends with her yeah i i was i i walked in new york so i attended times square church so it's from there, I've been in um, Haifa a couple of times when they're building the church. So I, I got to know them from, from there. Right. So, but I visited lately from here. So she actually introduced me to the Global Watch. Oh. So because of the timing, uh, it, it was difficult for me to even connect yesterday when you prayed for Africa. And then I uh -huh. got to see the email and then I said, okay, so I have to try to sit up today so that I, I could at least come on. I, I, it's a privilege for me to be um, 
invited and accepted into the Global Watch. I believe that every Christian uh, that is looking forward to the home in heaven will always be happy to be in a place where you can go spiritually, where you can connect with people with like mind and uh, also try to intercede for nations, for individuals, and even uh, yeah. for home. I believe that a lot is happening in the world and so many people, even in the church, don't seem to be aware. So I feel so privileged that I can be a part of this. And um, trust me. Well, welcome, God. Asalina. We're, welcome. We're, we're delighted to have you with us. And any friend of Karen's is a friend of ours. So um, we're, we're very glad to have you on board and we bless Nigeria. Yes, and, uh, just believe Thank that you. Nigeria is a great nation that is going to really uh, shine like never before in the days ahead Amen. Uh, for Jesus. Yep. Amen. Thank you. Um, okay, great. Let's go to Justin. Justin, do you want to unmute yourself? Yep, I can unmute myself. Um, yeah, hello, my name is Justin Ujus. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Um, oh. I didn't really know about the Global Watch until about probably a month ago when um, I was introduced by Ruth Webb. Oh, who some yeah. of you may know. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I went to school with her son. So, I've known her for what, 28 years or something. So, and she's brought me through a lot of deliverance ministry. And, um, and yeah, so I've been introduced through her and, actually because of her and my grandparents that I'm a Christian. Um, and so, yeah, since then I've been through a lot of the videos that you've got online and they've also been very good with teaching. Um, what else? And yeah, so grown a lot through those. Um, and then let's see. So earlier on, I actually had a strong call into China and I've spent some time there. And yeah, since then I've come back and I've really grown a lot in prayer, um, particularly through COVID times and through the ministry of Dutch Sheets. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've watched a lot of his Give Him 15 videos and mm -hmm. and now it's the Global Watch videos. Um, but then it leads me to a question that I've got. So I've seen some of the, so I've seen a lot of the, um, watch videos that's on the schedule as well as on YouTube and I've seen for example the Hong Kong watch videos um, but I'm just wondering about are there any say China watch videos or Japan watch or in that part of the world particularly at the moment with um, the wars and rumors of wars and because that part yeah. of the world I've followed a lot more. I know a lot more about it. When it comes to um, Israel, that's an area that's slowly being revealed to me just now, a lot through Ruth, a lot now through the Global Watch videos, but it's yeah. a new area of revelation for me, particularly as I pray. Um, so I'm just wondering about, yeah, are there any watches there? Or if not, how could, well, are they being started or... Yeah, so yeah. I'm just wondering about that space. Yep. The, great, great question. You want to, Sue, you want to just answer that yeah. briefly? And there's we've, we've been several more people that we need to. Yeah. Um, mm. There's been a lot of interest in it. Um, and I was going to contact you anyway, because I saw your interest in it. Um, the There is a form of a Japan watch, but it's definitely under the radar. And um, there are people in that area, but I... We definitely would love to see something develop that's more um, the active, let's put it that way. So I, I'll be in contact with you on that. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. And just Thank um, just so, so that you know, and so everybody knows is that we're, we're building the watch slowly and relationally. So we're not just saying, okay, we have, you know, 200 nations, let's find people to, you know, lead watches in each, each nation. We're really, we're really just growing by relationship and interest, and that seems to be the best way to have kind of a solid, relationally based, um, uh, you know, groups coming together. So, but your interest is um, is uh, welcome, and we'll we can talk more about how we can develop things and 
Japan and China. So thank you so that, much. Justin. That's true of anybody else on this uh, on this call that have an interest that where there's a, a watch going, we can help you get um, established in that. Or if there's not, yeah. then we can talk more about that. Let's uh, yes, uh, let's let's go on to um, Molly. Molly, you want to just um, unmute yourself? Yes. Yes, thank you, Dr. Fred and Sue and um, all the leaders here and all those who have joined. I just want to say how much uh, I have grown personally joining this watch and uh, seeing God moving. Uh, even though I'm of Indian origin, I still am with India Watch, but a citizen of Australia, but see both the nations change with the, the uh, progressive uh, prophetic prayers and and uh, and uh, all the prophetic uh, insight that you have so well stewarded and allowed God to uh, use that um, uh, from like just joining and coming to Hernhut, knowing you both and getting on the watches, uh, the need to, con to be a consecrated vessel uh, you know, and that is such a constant thing that God was calling us into this consecration. Uh, and uh, and this is it, this is not just another pray meeting or another watch you can jump and go into another one and another one, but this has purpose. This has purpose. And we see the signs and wonders that follow the gatherings that we you put together. And so it's a journey and I've been uh, want to gratefully thank you for the ecclesia and teaching about ecclesia, how it's transforming Australia, how it's transforming the rest of the world, and uh, teaching all those uh, um, books about Israel, the, keeping the Israel watch strong, and how pivotal that is for the end times and for where we are going as the nations of the earth and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that focus the signs and wonders that follow those who believe and you're uh, clearly hearing the voice of God and encouraging the prophetic. This is all brought me, I know as a person, but it's not just about one person, but just in the influence that has had wherever I have added that to the other parts of the nation, they, they, we're growing and we're saying that you brought a larger, um, to understand that scripture, um, from uh, Psalm 2, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And I'm mm -hmm. really saying that come to pass. So I want to bless you from my heart. And thank you, um, Dr. Fred and Sue. You've been like a mother and a spiritual mother and a father. You've nurtured us. Your tears, your your prophetic words, your jokes, your even your marriage is... <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you have your squabbles. <laughs> <laughs> thank you don't tell all our secrets please yeah yeah don't yeah you don't you don't have to confess our sins that's 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 okay molly anyways thank you we we love you very good we love you. all right lucian go ahead from portugal you have to unmute yourself well, you i am in portugal but i live i live also in the east coast of New York, uh, in the east side of um, of United States. So okay. really briefly to share, I was married for 17 years to an Israeli. So I heard way back when, he probably I married him in 93, I already heard that he used, used, used to tell me, it's going to come a day where people are going to know who, uh, who, uh, who the Muslim people are. And I use it to be like very like shocked. I'm like he's so he's not he's not a Christian. He was not anything, but he used he used he used to tell me it's gonna come a time that uh, this world uh, this world is gonna be divided. Um, I pass forward. I'm not married uh, to him. I have I have three uh, three beautiful children. One is living is living in Tel Aviv. Um, I came. I came to know. I came. I came. Uh, I came uh, to know the Lord in, I think, was in two thousand four. And as soon as I came uh, to know God, I I became a prophetic type of a person, and I knew things. I saw things, but I couldn't, 
I couldn't channel it. And um, and then I had a hard to, to always pray to, uh, to Israel. I got involved. I got involved in Brooklyn Tabernacle. I was there. It was a prayer ministry, a prayer church. I don't know if you guys know any any anyone knows about about a church. Oh yeah, sure. We're very uh, Brooklyn familiar. Tabernacle. Yeah. Um. So so in Brooklyn Tabernacle, I grew a lot. I became a prayer warrior. But people were not talking about Israel at all. It was not Israel was not in people's radar. So. It kind of, I got stagnant in that sense. Then uh, during COVID, uh, I was buying a house here in Portugal. I married again to a Portuguese man. I was buying a house here and I, I flew to to London to do a course. I am a skincare person and I do holistic, uh, holistic therapy. I went to London in February of 2000. You just muted yourself. Lucian. And completely out of the blue, I went, I flew, I flew, I flew to London in 2000, 2020. And completely out of the blue, I was following China's new, you know, in January. And I told my husband, uh, this is coming here uh, to United States. And he told me, are you crazy? Of course not. I said, this is coming here. And people would not hear me. So I flew, I flew to London. I was in London doing a course there, and and then I lived in London in '88. I lived in London in uh, uh, 2088. I mean uh, 1988, and I saw London. I walked to London. I was like, God, what's happening? What's happening? I feel like weird. It's something's going on because London changed a lot. So, anyways, I came here to Portugal. I bought the house. And I flew back home. I flew back home in March 2000, 2020. And I felt this thing is coming. And then Trump was talking about, about closing on the country. And I said, it's not going to be for two weeks. It's going to be for a long time. Yes. I have okay, to... so Lu Lu Lucienne, we, um, we have to... Uh, Why? I don't mean to cut you short, but it's very clear that you have a prophetic anointing. And we love that. And you are most welcome to the Global Watch. And we're very, uh, we're not only focused on the prophetic, but we're focused on Israel as well. And I think you're going to find that you're going to, you're going to love it. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to grow. Uh, people, you, people just, when people, it's very interesting because what you're describing is what so many people go through. God gives us giftings and then he gives us an understanding of the giftings and how to operate in that, you know, over time. And it just, he doesn't, you know, you, most of the time we think, oh, we have to learn about these things first and then we'll operate in it. God just throws you into the, into the situation with your giftings and you, um, you're like, well, what is this? How, you know, how come I'm doing what I'm doing and everything? But I think you're going to, I sense that you're going to learn a lot about uh, the prophetic and your gifting and how to really operate in that in a way that's going to be going to bless you and bless the Lord. So thank you so much for, um, for being with us you're you're very welcome here um all right let's go to jenny hager jenny well um i've been on the um on the watch since the very beginning and uh i just want to read 2 corinthians 3 2 because the outstanding leadership of fred and sue this is what comes to me you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And I think all of us that have been on the watch for a while would, would agree. It's just such an honor to be involved in, in Global Watch. Um, many, as you've heard, have said it is a safe place. It's a place where uh, we can all feel vulnerable, we can all make mistakes. Uh, and that word that the Lord gave us, that you don't join the Global Watch, you jump in the river. Uh, this is like Ezekiel's river. He is taking the Global Watch deeper and deeper. 
and the Holy Spirit is the one that has the control on the global watch and that's been the heart of, of Fred and Sue uh, and it is a place of extraordinary revelation. We are often heard to say, as I think we've said on this call, you can't make this stuff up. We, we say that a lot on Global Watch because this is, we know, we recognise this is Holy Spirit leading us here. This is and taking us in a direction many times we've had no idea. I mean, you've heard Sue earlier saying the extraordinary visions and the things that the Lord showed her. Uh, this incredible uh, leading of the Lord uh, is, is the thing that builds the Global Watch together. And it's a convergence. It's like this river that is made up of lots of us as streams coming in from our nation, building this river, as it were, imparting, sharing, fellowshipping together, loving each other. There's personal growth as well as this, the corporate building of, of, of the watchmen and, and, and building of, of the walls. So I, I just was interested in what Justin said about China because here in, in Australia, uh, we pray on the Australian watch, on the Anzac watch and on the South Pacific watch because the Lord gave us revelation of the footprint of the dragon in our area and as you know, Ruth Webb, you would know all that she has shared on this. We So that there's sometimes uh, different watches incorporate uh, an, another nation because that's where the leading of the Lord might be. And so we're praying for, for China and, and for Taiwan because it's sort of part of our, uh, you know, our, our, our region. So I just want to uh, say... But again, it's such an incredible blessing. And I, I know that all of us on the watch feel that here's been an opportunity for us to grow more in the Lord. And the teaching has been amazing. Um, yes, I just, I don't know if I can properly describe. Uh, we know that this is a major plan of God to develop this watch around the world. And that this is the hour in the end time days that he is calling up, preparing and equipping the watchman. And the place that he's doing it is the Global Watch. So bless you and thanks. Well, thank you, Jenny. We love you and you are uh, you are a great leader and we just honor you for decades and decades of plowing and being a, a uh, general a forerunner and, uh, and, uh, and a pioneer. In, uh, in the prayer movement in Australia. And uh, we're just, we are, feel incredibly honored and blessed that you would be interested in, um, in even in being a part of the Global Watch, which you are an integral part. So thank you so much. Um, we will have two more people and we're, we're going over time a little bit, but I think we, we'll, if you have to get off, that's fine, but we'll, we'll try to wrap it up in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, Tony? Would you like to unmute yourself and? Yeah. Hi, can you hear us? Yes, okay. I can. Um, this is amazing because um, I want to introduce my wife, Priscilla. Hello. I'm Priscilla and I'm Tony. And first time, I only heard about you guys probably a day or two yeah. ago. And <laughs> uh, Scylla, I was met a friend and she's on the screen here with us. And I'll hand the whole thing over. So it's been wonderful listening to you anyway so good afternoon or morning or wherever you are or whatever time it is well thank you welcome to the watch you sound like uh, you might be from australia as well yeah Hello. yeah <laughs> oh wonderful Hello. we love the australians <laughs> we live um about 20 minutes from jenny Hagar. oh and, oh and, okay <laughs> and allison um i met allison um from so we're in South Australia. I met Alison for a cuppa yesterday, and she got talking. Uh, I hadn't even heard of Global Watch this time yesterday, and wow. Um, wow. and so just before I uh, an hour or so ago, I said, "Guess which book I'm reading?" And it's the um, Moravian oh, miracle. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the Moravian miracle, anyway, That's and. Yeah. Um, and look, just the connection, yeah, anyway, but anyway oh, that one, we're, I'm halfway through reading the Moravian Miracle and clear. all the connections, um, just, you know, hearing you all speak from around the world and being now at the, having entered the age of 70s where, um, you know, a lifetime of 
connections, you start to see God's yeah. weaving hand. Uh, so it's it's delightful to be to be there and see you all today. And uh, thanks, Alison, Great. for mentioning. Great. Well, the Tony, global and watch yes. yesterday. The dobbing us in. Dobbing Thank us you. in, and we better meet Jenny sometime soon too. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. great. Well, Tony and Scylla, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. Um, okay, last but not least, Adelaide. Oh, okay. Yes, my name is Adelheid. Oh, you can also call me Heidi, and I'm from Germany. And uh, I was led really um, online to Kehilata Kamel. I, was, I just got the impression, just go there for a holiday. And then afterwards, I found uh, the Global Watch online. And I have been here on and off, but I really didn't know how to start and where to, uh, where to engage. So I'm very glad for this meeting uh, today uh, of meeting and greeting each other. Um, I have been a, a missionary with the Moravians uh, to Tanzania for three years, but that's long ago. Wow. Um, and now I, uh, I watched the hand meetings, the summit, and then I was really encouraged uh, and thinking about uh, becoming part of this and, and starting to pray, but really, I need to learn how to pray for the nations. And I'm also not in the prophetic, I, I, but I would like to, to learn how to hear. And this is why I'm here. So I'm, I'm just learning here and I want to listen and I'm glad to be here. Great, Thank well, we're, we're glad to have you with us, Heidi. And uh, um, you all, like uh, Jenny was saying, it's a river that you jump into and uh, yeah. you can just jump in the river. The best way to learn how to pray and the best way to learn how to prophesy is just to be around people who are doing it. And and you'll grab a hold of that anointing. You know, um, you know Paul says, uh, desire the gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So that gift is available to, to anyone. And uh, we're, um, we're just so glad that you're wanting to learn and grow. And, and believe me, you will, and you will be contributing a tremendous amount, I can tell already. So thank you and welcome to the Global Watch. So we're, um, we're actually over the hour now. Um, Susan, back to you, what do, what do we? I, I, one last, one last uh, important um, part of the Global Watch is uh, our texting app. Uh, where we can communicate and you can begin to get connected with those who of like interest. Um, I just put in the chat, uh, we have chosen Signal as our texting um, mechanism, largely because it is the most secure and because we're working with uh, groups in the underground churches, um, we wanted to do this. And Signal is actually the texting um, mechanism that the navy seals here in the usa use and they they can vouch that it it works as best as anything can so i put in the signal group how you get signal it, you don't get it i don't think in the app stores you can get it online though at um, www.signal.org and you can get it for android or for ios so the link is right there to get the app. Once you get the app, you can, if you can copy and paste what I wrote, there's a signal. Um, you go to signal and then you click on this and you'll be in the Global Watch community group and that'll get you started. We have a number of signal threads. It probably drives some of you crazy, but I've gotten used to it and I actually like it. Um, but there's an Australian, there's a US group, there's a uh, UK group, there's an Israel watch. Um, so there's a number of various watches of your interest. You can just click in and get connected with them. Anyway, we have absolutely loved being with you. This has been a tremendous help to us to get to know you, get to know who's new. Um, we are always available. Uh, info at the Global Watches, how you can get hold of me. Um, or admin at the globalwatch.com is the best one to get to. If you want an answer, you'll get, get to our administrator, Chanel. She's very on top of things. Um, and she'll get back to you for any questions or getting you hooked up. 
Oh, Shirley. Yeah, I just want to encourage you, we all have access to a lot of media, a lot of um, stuff that is happening all over the world. And if everybody has to post, oh my gosh, this has happened, we need to pray for this. I'm, I've got to tell somebody, please don't do that. That's not what the signal thread is for. The signal thread is for corporate communications. There are hundreds and hundreds of people on the group. Imagine if everybody decides, oh, we need to pray for this, we need to pray for that. So please use wisdom use wisdom and say, do I need to post this? Also, we are not about doom and gloom. We, we, we are critically aware of what is going on. But if you do need to post something, please add a prayer point and a scripture. Give us some, give us something to focus on other than just that, because it's, we, we, we don't need report of the bad news. We get that. Give us a prayer point, give us a scripture but we love you and we appreciate you and we value you. <laughs> Sorry, Sue, I had to bring that in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well said, it's a process. Sue. We're all in a learning pro learning yeah. process. So Susan, where do people go to find out, um, you know, the, the, the 10 um, international prayer calls that we have every week, where do people go to find out what is being, what's coming up, you know, what's, what's going on when, when they, they can connect with certain groups um, where you know the schedule basically okay let me just um quickly get it here i'm gonna take you oh. this is important because this is this will really get you help help you uh yeah so so getting connected with one or two or three okay this is our per week, uh, per, per the, week the global watch here you go over to resources and right here is the schedule. So it's online. Um, you can also get it. I don't know if you've been reading the chats, but we have a, a Global Watch app on either Android or iOS, Apple Store or Google Play. Go to The Global Watch. You can get the app under prayer. There is a schedule there, and it's right at your fingertips on your, on your cell phone, and you can find it. Yeah. So the globalwatch.com resources, and then you can uh, click on schedule in the drop down menu. That's how you find out what's going on and and get into one or two or three uh, um, watches, international call watches per week. Um, and that will get really and, and get onto the uh, signal group. And that'll that'll help you just get right in the flow of things. And um, you're going to be uh, you're, you're you're going to have a great time uh, along with the rest of us. So, um, Susan, is there anything else you want to say before we close off in prayer? No, just welcome. Thank you all for your attention and, and going through this hour. And we are always available to answer any questions. And like I said, just jump in the river and you'll you'll find your way. You click a button, and pretty soon things start happening and you get get connected with people. Yeah. So um, uh, let's see, why don't we have um, uh, Allison, the woman who used to be shy, um, why don't we have you close us off in prayer? <laughs> well, Father God, we just love you and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you love us to bits. We thank you that there's nothing that can ever separate us from your love. And Lord, we thank you for the way you have been moving so wonderfully, powerfully, graciously through Global Watch. Father, we thank you that you are joining and knitting hearts. You're weaving us together like this beautiful, beautiful tapestry, beautiful cloth, Father. And each one thread, each one of us brings something that nobody else can. And so we thank you for all the beautiful gifts, Lord, that come from you. We thank you that you, precious Holy Spirit, um, are the one that teaches us and counsels us and comforts us. You help us grow up and you're helping us grow up together and you're forming something beautiful. So we just praise you for one another. We thank you again, precious Holy Spirit, without you, we cannot do anything without you, Father God. 
And we also want to give you thanks again for every single person that's involved with Global Watch and those who are coming on board. We just bless them now, Father, with your beautiful presence and your encouragement and your, uh, we just speak release to their giftings. Father, we thank you that uh, we are all this in this together, that we are family, and we bless you for our spiritual mum and dad across the airwaves, across the Zoom waves, and we bless you for them right now. We thank you for just heaping them with your presence and your joy, Father, as they see the fruit of their works. And we say again, thank you, Papa God. Amen. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Everybody, Amen. just unmute Amen. yourselves. Bless you. 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 Bless you.